you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. All right. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, um, my fraternity brother is making me laugh here in the comment section talking about my uh, sensual voice. Well, thank you, Jager, if I appreciate it. Uh, my voice has that effect on men. Uh, <laughs> anyway... Uh, let's talk about somebody else that has a sensual voice here for a second, and I am, of course, referring to the godfather of radio, Rush Limbaugh. Rush, of course, received the Presidential Medal of Honor, a huge honor for anybody receiving it, regardless of what president you get it from, regardless of when it takes place or why. I mean, that's uh, getting the highest civilian award from our federal government is a big accomplishment no matter who you are. And this happens in the wake of Rush announcing that he has late-stage lung cancer. But this is the clip of Rush actually getting it out. I want you to pay close attention to Rush's reaction and the reactions of the people there in the crowd. This is Rush receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Here tonight is a special man, beloved by millions of Americans, who just received a stage 4 advanced cancer diagnosis. This is not good news, but what is good news is that he is the greatest fighter and winner that you will ever meet. Rush Limbaugh, thank you for your decades of tireless devotion to our country. And Rush, in recognition of all that you have done for our nation, the millions of people a day that you speak to and that you inspire, and all of the incredible work that you have done for charity, I am proud to announce tonight that you will be receiving our country's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. I mean, you can tell there, he is just absolutely floored. He was not expecting that at all. I will now ask the First Lady of the United States to present you with the honor, please. I mean, he's just beside himself. You can tell by his reaction. And the thing about Rush is, and I'm going off of the testimony of people that know him well, not like me, because I've, I've never actually met the man, but... Typically, he's a guy that's just so buttoned up and has it together, and you can tell watching the show that he's like that, doesn't show a whole lot of emotion, but man, he is just overwhelmed. And that's appropriate, because he means so much to so many people. Now, the thing that is really great about that moment is, is just how astounded he is and, and how overwhelmed he is because I mean this is a guy that just got pretty much the worst news that any single person can ever get and I know because I've gotten the news before I've been in his shoes and granted his news is actually a little bit worse than mine because even at the start of mine we were pretty sure that we were able to get it in time I had I had late-term testicular cancer but that's far less dangerous than late-term lung cancer and uh, j just to receive an honor like that to, to get a boon like that after you've had no telling how much time alone thinking about, you know, what could happen. And, and like I said, I've been in his shoes. That's got to be such an incredible moment for you. This is a guy that even if you hate him, even if you can't stand his opinions, this is a guy that even if you disagree with him, he believes he's doing the right thing for America. He loves this country. And to see that happen for him is a great moment. And it just drives me nuts that the Democrats couldn't even applaud that. I get it. You don't like the guy. That's fine. But if the exact same thing had happened to, I don't know, Chris Matthews or Rachel Maddow or one of the other big names over on the left, especially after they get the news that they have late-term cancer, this is where the Daily Dose of Stupid comes in. How can you even, even if you were just doing it for the selfish reason of you didn't want to look bad on TV, how do you not applaud that? 
I mean, do you really, really hate the president and Rush Limbaugh so much that you can't even do that and acknowledge that that's a great moment for somebody that is going through a tremendous amount of stress and turmoil at his life at that time? I, I, I don't understand that mentality. I just don't. And it's no surprising this is a, a media hack. Jennifer Rubin of the Washington Post tweeted this out, saying, this is a national disgrace that a birther, a racist, and a misogynist is getting this award. Why not give it to David Duke? Now, what's hilarious to me is that this is a person that claims to be a conservative opinion columnist. Now, Jennifer Rubin hasn't written anything remotely conservative in the past 10 years. She refers to herself as a conservative opinion writer. And you could be a conservative and not be a Trump fan. There's a lot of us out there. There's some days where I'm not a Trump fan and I'm a conservative. But, I mean, look at the way that she, she points this out. It's like every single liberal talking point consolidated into one tweet. And I think that a great way to look at this is it's everything wrong with the media and their treatment of people like Rush Limbaugh and like Donald Trump. First of all, everybody that I disagree with is a Klan member. Everybody that I disagree with, they're a white supremacist. Everyone I disagree with, they're a Nazi. There is absolutely no sense of decorum or tact or, I don't know, perspective when it comes to these kinds of things. You can't think, maybe the guy that I don't know, like Rush Limbaugh, happens to be against busing because he thinks it's economically stupid, it wastes taxpayer money, and by the way, he thinks that it actually hurts the minority children that it's supposed to be helping, maybe he's not the same as David Duke. It's so devoid of self-reflection, and that's one of the things that gets under my skin about it. But another thing that, again, it's, it's just everything wrong with the media, it's basically the idea that Trump can do absolutely nothing good. No matter what President Trump does, it's always wrong. Even if it's doing something that is an incredibly nice, magnanimous gesture like this for a man that is literally dying... And there, there's a decent chance, and I, you know, I, I wish the best for him. I'm not trying to be morbid, but just to emphasize my point, there's at least a, a pretty good chance that Rush isn't with us for another year. And everything he's been through in his career, and everything, and and now you're seeing Trump do this as a friend, and somebody that cares about Rush, and somebody that has millions of listeners every day. No, no, he's just like David Duke. Nothing that Trump does is good. Not a single thing. This was just terrible. Can you not step back and kind of try to look at it with different eyes for a second? And then finally, one more thing that the media constantly does, and again, she's just an example of it, is that my outrage justifies whatever nasty thing I do or whatever nasty thing that I say. See, I'm so personally outraged by it that it doesn't matter that I'm attacking somebody that maybe could use at least a little encouragement at this point, or maybe at the very least say the timing's bad, I'll hold off and hold on to my outrage and, and maybe talk about that a little bit later. Can't do that. All we know is we don't like that guy. Destroy. I mean, can you not muster up at least a little compassion? A little self-reflection? but we all know that that's not what the mainstream media does. And uh, as if that weren't enough, this is a second tweet on the matter by Jennifer Rubin, where she says, Thank you. Award this to a blatant homophobe, racist, misogynist, etc. is a disgrace, and both the media and the Dems are playing defense on tearing up a lie-filled speech. Now, I don't want to get into the whole tearing up the speech thing. I think people are up in arms about it. Yes, it's dumb. Yes, it makes Nancy Pelosi look childish. That's fine. Let her look childish. There's no reason for you to pile on. Just having somebody watch that themselves, it does all the work for you. You want to talk about this award going to somebody who's a misogynist? Well, I tend to remember that President Obama gave the Presidential Medal of Freedom to Tom Brokaw, who has been accused of sexual molestation, and Bill Clinton, who's been accused of sexual molestation and rape several times, 
And we know from DNA evidence that he did abuse his power and actually force an intern to have sex with him in the Oval Office. But that's not a misogynist, right? I mean, yeah, rushes. He's never actually got, you know, anything like that happened. But somehow he's the misogynist and Bill Clinton's not. And oh, yeah, let's not forget that Obama also awarded that medal to Ted Kennedy. And a woman actually died because he was trying to hide his affair with her. Left her for dead in the car. Because he's a coward. And you didn't have a problem when President Obama gave the medal to him. Let's let go of the fake outrage, please. Spare me your righteous indignation. And yeah, I know people on the political right do it too. I think that their righteous indignation over Pelosi tearing up the speech is a little old. Yeah, it was a dumb thing to do. Yeah, it makes her look bad. Whatever. Can we all just move on? Surely there are more important things for us to worry about than that. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, 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 it's like Obamacare. So you gotta subscribe to find out what's on it.